Today we're going to look back at the games that I played in 2022. Just an ASMR ramble, you know, I'm not going to break down games, it's not a review, we're not going to be very critical, look, it's just a ramble, and I'm sure, as I do, I'll forget to mention something I like about the game, like, oh, I should have mentioned you can platform up to there, or, oh, I should have mentioned this. That might just happen, that's kind of why it's called a ramble. Let's get into it. The first game, Deep Rock Galactic. Shout out to the PlayStation Plus. This game was made free with PlayStation Plus membership back in January of 2022. Never heard about it before. Gave it a chance and it was like, whoa, where has this been? I love that it has exploration, but also first person shooter. So it's very chill, but then it can get ramped up with uh, shooting action. So it's a really cool mixture of, of good chill vibes, but also intense action. And that's what I love. And you can do different difficulty settings, which is always great. So you can challenge yourself more or just play it low key. Another big important thing is that it's fun playing solo. You can do it solo just fine. But if you do have two or three friends, you can do a team up to four. It is so much fun. Rock and stone. If you know, you know. If you play this game for more than an hour, you're going to be saying rock and stone for a good while. And if you play it for more than a hundred hours like me, Rock and Stone is just going to be in your vocabulary between you and your friends. <laughs> Rock and Stone. So yeah, um, just a really cool game. Definitely worth checking out. Deep Rock Galact. Next up is Sifu. Sifu is a third person brawler combat fighting game. And it's super difficult. At least it can be. When it first came out, it only had one difficulty. And it was hard, man. So if you don't know about the game, you basically you start at age 20. And if you die, you get a year shaved off your life and you can go right back into the fight up until I think age 80, if I remember. Yeah. And now that they've updated it, they have three different difficulties, which made it so much more approachable because on the regular i was able to get to the second boss but i can never beat him and now that they have what's called student difficulty they've actually been able to progress further that way and i love that because otherwise i wouldn't have continued like i loved it i thought it was fun it was really cool challenge but i'm terrible at like combos and parrying, trying to do all that, as well as with like a smart AI that is just, they want to kick your ass, man. Like, and the bosses, who, even on student mode, when I've, I've gotten a little further now, still kind of challenging. So really cool game, love the art style. Um, and now with the different difficulty settings, I think it is easier to just jump in, play it for a couple rounds here and there. And once you get into flow, into a good flow of it, and you start just beating up people left and right, you can feel like quite the badass. It's really cool. Next up, game I played in 2022, Riders Republic. I made a few videos on this game. I have a playlist, and I'll also leave a link to the playlists and videos in my description so you can check those out. Riders Republic, also another game that isn't typically my style. Uh, racing games, I, I'm never very good at them. And it's just like uh, Madden with me, where the difficulty, if I turn it down, it's too easy. I'm leaving everyone to dust. But then just the next difficulty up and I'm getting left behind, I'm doing terrible. 
So I'm not good at racing games. Uh, and if you watch my videos, you will see I am not, I'm not top tier in racing. But it's still really cool, really chill. You can do different races. They have all sorts of racing. They have skiing, snowboarding, snowmobile. They give you a jet pack. Uh, so just a lot of different variety. Biking. You can bike. Obviously, that's my favorite part. So yeah, you can either do these different races or trick events. Or you can just kind of play. It's a huge open world, so you can bike around or explore around however you want. And the way it all connects, you know, you have your snow part of the map, the desert, the forest. So they got you all covered there. Uh, so it can really be a cool way to just kill a couple hours, have some fun. Uh, it's a beautiful map. So yeah, it's just a really good time. And obviously the big part of it is the big mass race, which that just sounds weird, but you can play up to 64 players on PS5 and Xbox, whatever. I don't have the Xbox. Or it's 32 players on PS4 on the equivalent Xbox. But that's where it can get really fun. And even though I'm terrible at that, there's something about just all those players at one time. You're all trying to get to the finish line. So yeah, Riders Republic. A lot of fun, actually. Something, though, that's weird is it's a Ubisoft game. And I feel like Ubisoft has always been pretty good about getting all sorts of cool customizations for your characters. Oddly enough, in this game, I found the customization kind of lackluster, kind of uninspiring. You know, you get the basic stuff, but it's like, why can't I just like pick, like give me a hoodie, let me change the color, like give me six colors to change from, you know, something like that. They don't even do that. So that's what's kind of weird about it. And they kind of promote it like when they get updates, here's new skins. It's like, you're giving us two shirts. But anyway, that side of part aside, still a fun game. Definitely worth checking out, in my opinion. Next up is Sniper Elite 5. Yes. Now, I actually have only played Sniper Elite on the Nintendo Switch, believe it or not. I think it was Sniper Elite 3 I played, uh, but I've been familiar with it. Obviously, it's infamous for its slow-mo kill cam, where it travels, follows the bullet, and goes through them. So that's really cool. Sniper Elite 5 came out, and the only reason I actually got it was because a friend and I agreed that we could do the campaign co-op. So we did the entire campaign co-op, and wow, that was a fun game. It gets crazy difficult. Enemies will come down on you pretty, pretty hard, but when you have a backup person, so when you're reloading, they can take cover, vice versa. It really opens that game up. And then you get the kill cam. And the cool part about co-op campaign is that it'll show if you both turn it on, it'll show that slow-mo cam. So there were so many moments where that was happening and we would just kind of pause and watch it and be like, oh my God, holy shit, that was awesome. Really cool moments in that game. The maps were huge, they got really big. So like going through them was super fun. Yeah, Sniper Elite 5, just a really fun time. Next up, is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now, I had mentioned this in an Apex Legends video, and I told my friends I really believed I was done with Call of Duty. You know, PvP over the years, which was kind of like all I used to really be about, I grew up Call of Duty. You know, after a while, Call of Duty gets infuriating. The first Warzone was really fun, especially during the pandemic, but then you just die so quickly, I feel, and however many hours we played, and we won like 20 war zones, 
which hey, that's still cool. But man, over a majority of the time, just felt like you're getting schooled. I don't know. And I think for me, it's tough because back in the day, I played Call of Duty, World at War, and yes, I'm gonna brag, I had a game where I went 55 and 0. 55 and 0. And so there's part of me where it's like, man, I used to be the top dog, right? I would always get, at least in the top three, usually top of the leaderboard. And so now I'm older, I'm slower. I don't have that, the wits like that. Plus everyone else is better now too a days. Anyway, Warzone 2.0. The Warzone 2.0, I think is really cool. But the new mode, the DMZ mode, that to me is where the fun is. Because me and the friends, we can play that. In DMZ, there are other teams, but the idea is that you're playing against AI. So you're doing different missions, collecting intel, destroying supplies, delivering cargo, whatever it may be. So there's a fun co-op experience there. But the biggest thing Call of Duty did, proximity chat. They added proximity chat to the multiplayer, and that has single-handedly changed the experience. You still get groups that, hey, they want to kill you in there. It's kind of what it is. But I would say for the majority, people are actually pretty cool in DMZ. Because when you're within 55 meters with proximity chat, you can both communicate. So two teams can talk to each other. And like I said, a majority of the time, it would happen where we would get into a zone, we would hear the other team or vice versa. And it's like, hey, hey, friendly, friendly. We're just trying to get this mission. We're just trying to extract whatever it is. And I would say a lot of times like, hey, so are we. We're just trying to do this. We'll leave you alone. Or you can also join the other group. So a team of three, you can join a, another team get it up to six players and do the missions that way. So yeah, just a really different way of playing Call of Duty. Proximity chat, awesome. So yeah, one of the coolest experiences I've had in a video game was because of this. We were playing, going into a zone, I got shot down, you go down, your friend can revive you. One of my teammates took the other guy down. You know, we're, we're all talking to each other, talking to, against each other, that kind of thing. And I had just said, hey, we don't have to fight. We don't have to fight. We're cool. The other team's like, hey, hey, we're cool. We don't need to fight either. We're, we're good. All right. My guys are going to res me. You guys can res them. I will go on our way. And that's what happened. I got res. They resed him. We split ways. All because of proximity chat where we're like, hey, we don't have to be enemies. So, yeah, proximity chat. Wow. Really changed that. So now Call of Duty is fun again for me. So, yeah. The next game is Fortnite. So, going back. I've given up on Call of Duty. It's kind of over it. But then Fortnite introduced their no build mode. And I was like, okay, I'm curious about this. So we jumped into it, me and my friends. And it was like, yes, this is cool. Because before I did try it kind of initially when Fortnite came out or when it was just getting popular. And we just, we couldn't compete. We felt like we couldn't compete with the builds, the way that people can build these towers so freaking fast, jump through them, all while trying to take shots at you. And I'm just like, it takes me way too long to build in that game. It's like, just give me a gun, just let me shoot someone. So no build mode changed all of that. And basically uh, when Star Wars content also came to Fortnite, shut up and take my money. So I bought a lot of Star Wars skins but that was what was fun about it. It's just seeing all these characters from the IPs that you love. Playing Fortnite, I think, helped me fall in love with Call of Duty again. Because Fortnite, 
I feel like it's more chill. I would get angry in the first war zone when we'd go down, we'd lose, we're getting killed, that kind of stuff. It would make me angry, like it, it wasn't enjoyable so much. And in Fortnite, it felt, it felt like everyone had a fighting chance. We were all kind of on the same level advantage wise, you know? So when we would die or lose, it's like, huh, all right. Like, and not to say, you know, you want to win. So you'd get upset sometimes, but overall it's like, okay, yeah, that's how it goes. Like, but yeah, we played a lot of it and it was super fun. Fortnite, there we go. Next up game I played. Far Cry 6. Now, I made four, five videos? Five videos. I made five videos in Far Cry 6. And this was my first time playing the franchise. Never played Far Cry before. And going into it, you know, I would watch the reviews or see what people had to say about it. And a lot of the sentiments seemed to be like, yeah, it's another Far Cry game. You know, gets boring really quick and not too much changed over the years and, and all of that. And I would say I think that's a pretty valid observation. Even though I played it and I enjoyed it for what it was when I played it, I did get bored with the story pretty quickly. Didn't finish it. It just kind of did get repetitive and wasn't all too interesting to me necessarily. But what I will say, I had so much fun. The first video I made, if you watched it, I started out in the helicopter. My entire plan for that video was to do a flyover tour kind of video because I thought the anti-aircraft were only on the coasts and I took one down. I thought, oh, okay, well, as long as we fly over land, we're cool, but found out quickly in that video that it's not the case. I got shot down and I made this epic, awesome jump parachute onto the truck. And from then on, that's how my experience was with Far Cry. It was just kind of these little moments that popped up, kind of unexpected moments and really made that game fun and interesting to me. So I was super excited to do those videos. Yeah, because everything you saw, you know, couldn't necessarily plan for those moments. So it became fun that way. Yeah, Far Cry 6. Okay, so for these next games, I'm gonna go over them more quickly because uh, I don't have a lot to necessarily say about them. But these were games that I played in 2022 that I definitely wanna mention. First up is Lego Star Wars. It's Lego Star Wars. I really don't have to say much more, do I? Fun game. I actually played it more on my Switch, I'll say. But like a sucker for Star Wars, of course I bought it for Switch and the PlayStation 5. But come on, it's Lego Star Wars together. What more do you want? Great game. I played Watch Dogs Legion. Also a game that was the first time I jumped in the franchise. Never played Watch Dogs before. Did not even really play. I pretty much played the tutorial, maybe a mission or two. Uh, didn't really care about that because all I wanted to do was walk around London. And that game gave it to me. So in that regard, it's really fun for me in that way. It's cool walking around London, especially at night. Uh, I'd made two videos from that game, so be sure to check them out. Another game I played was Necromunda Hired Gun, which is set in the Warhammer 40k universe. Uh, and uh, to my knowledge, I think this is the first entry into war, into war as well, into Warhammer that I played. First person shooter, really grimy, underbelly game. You're going through these crazy uh, kind of dungeon-esque, you know, cyberpunk dungeon-esque world. I'm probably doing a really bad way of describing this game, but oh my god. So I initially played it on the PS4 and didn't really, didn't really like it actually. But when I got the PS5, I kind of went back 
And it was so much smoother gameplay wise that 60 frames, just saying, I really loved that game. To me, it felt like Doom, and this might be a little bit of a hot take. I actually enjoyed it more than Doom. Doom Eternal is so much fun, like just craziness going on. But yeah, I don't know. There's something about Hired Gun, just the way you kind of maneuver the map. But it's just crazy, intense action. You have to always be on the go. So for that regard, it was a really fun game. And I actually beat it, which is cool. I played Weird West. Weird West is a fun game. I really only played it for a little bit. But I really like the gameplay of it, the shooting. It's kind of top-down, uh, asymmetrical, whatever. But the cool part is is your choices really affect the story. For instance, of like, if you go to kidnap someone and if you kill them, that'll change the outcome, stuff like that. Or if you run into another enemy gang and a member gets away, that member will get away, tell another group, and they'll start hunting you. So it's really cool in that regard. And also, it's never the same. You know, part of it is when you're kind of sneaking up onto a base or whatever, you're trying to monitor the patrol, right? And let's say you go through it like, oh, they're, they're going to they do a 20 minute walk around this base, right? Let's say you go into it and you die, you come back and you're like, okay, I know that they're going to walk around this 20 base for 20 minutes. That's not the case. Because now it might be like, oh, well, now they're doing it in five minute increments and now there's a guy that constantly stands right there he doesn't move so they're always changing it on you and that was really cool i, I really do like it i, I need to get back to it because i really didn't play it too much just kind of got sidetracked but yeah pretty fun game actually next up is stray okay when i saw the trailer i was hooked a cyberpunk world where you get to play as a cat I'm in. And then it was available free from the PlayStation Essential. I got bored with it kind of quickly. I, I don't know what it was. I just, it didn't grab me. And also, I'm someone who doesn't necessarily like puzzles in games. They can be okay. Uh, but for me, if I'm spending more time trying to figure out a puzzle and you know, I just want to get to action or I want to explore. So puzzles are not necessarily my friends in games. And they're not even that difficult, at least from what I got through. But I really only played like maybe half an hour of that game, if that. And yeah, it's a damn shame because everything about it, I was like, this looks incredible for me. But it just didn't grab me. And I know a lot of people loved it. It was up for game of the year and I'm not denying that it should or shouldn't be, just for me personally, just didn't grab me, unfortunately. <laughs> so, and next up, Way of the Hunter, which is obviously a hunting simulator game. And I actually did two walk-in videos with this one. Uh, I don't hunt. Uh, I wasn't necessarily seeking out the hunting aspect of this hunting game. Uh, the big part of it was like this big open map that I could do walks through. So in that regard, just like Watchdog Legions, I had fun doing it that way. I will say though, like the small amount of hunting that I did, I did just enough to like unlock another cabin so I could have more range to kind of walk through. I mean, you can always walk through them. Anyway, whatever. Uh, but with headphones, walking through that, amazing. Amazing. Like, so good. All the sounds, it provides just a really nice and relaxing gameplay that way for me. Uh, I just, I was not, I'm not good at the hunting aspect of it. I was able to do enough, like I said. But actually, it was enjoyable, and 
if you do, if you're looking for a hunting simulator, this one is incredible. Like it was fun tracking the animals, lining up your shot because you have to factor in wind and distance and all that stuff. So there's a lot of fun aspects to that. It's just not necessarily my game that I go for, but still really fun game. So next up, as I mentioned this year, I got a PS5. The first game I checked out was actually Cyberpunk 2077, of course. But the game I really wanted was Returnal. <laughs> and Returnal is so goddamn good. <laughs> like, it just it checks off so many of my marks. I actually do like roguelikes. Uh, I know a lot of people, it's like a love-hate thing. People either love them or they don't. I love them. And so you get a third person shooter with a triple A presentation of it. Phenomenal. And oddly enough, I didn't get Elden Ring. Souls like Elden Ring game, not not for me at all. I I don't like that type of difficulty in those games. Even though Elden Ring looks beautiful, I loved watching some walkthroughs of that. Uh but for me, I just I couldn't do it. Returnal, though, that difficulty, it's going to kick your ass. The first boss, man, I could not crack it. But as soon as I did, then I actually beat the second boss on my first try. I was like, what? So for me, it's like once I get in the hang of it, and you just keep moving, keep moving, keep shooting, and you can get through it. Just an amazing game. I still throw it on to play uh, here and there. Part of me does actually want to make a video for that, but the way you move around, because you have to always look, you're always moving, always shooting, looking around. So I don't know if it's necessarily uh, an ASMR friendly game, even though I've seen people play Warzone AMs, Warzone ASMR, but even then, I think there's moments in between you can kind of relax, but you're also in the action. You're not going, you're not bouncing and bouncing and jumping and all that. I don't know. I still might do it, but yeah. Anyway, Returnal, phenomenal game. Absolutely worth it, 100%. Another game I played in 2022 for the first time, even though it had been out for a while, Horizon Zero dawn it's a game i've been interested in and then obviously forbidden west came out this year so i had it and i had actually just booted it up no no not that. yeah here's what happened now i remember now i remember it was kind of like red dead redemption 2 for me where i played through the opening tutorial kind of bits and then just sort of set it aside even though I was like, okay, this is, this clicks. I really like this. But for whatever reason, just kind of walked away to it. And then just like Red Dead, I go back into it and I could not stop. So I actually just played this game, just beat it at the time of recording this about two weeks ago. No. No, I beat it like five days ago at the time of recording this. Super fun. I love the combat of it. The story, the way it opens up, really cool stuff and looks beautiful. So I'm super excited. I actually did buy Forbidden West. Not only did I buy it, I bought it physical because I felt like it demands it. So I still have a few other games I want to hit through before I get into this because I, I know that once I start it, I know I'm not going to want to stop. So really looking forward to that one. But there we are. Horizon Zero Dawn. So before we get into the last game that I want to talk about. Uh, one of my 2023 goals is to try to do more talking videos for you guys. Even though I love doing my no talking walking videos. Especially in Cyberpunk. They're my best performance performing videos uh, 
so I do I appreciate the people watching I love that people do and even for me when I'm at work I can throw those on for myself so I think that's important is to make something that you want to watch yourself I do enough listening to myself in my editing sessions that yeah, I wouldn't watch my ASMR videos so much so in a way the no talking videos are more for me and the talking videos are more for you yeah so sometimes I just feel bad when I know that there's maybe kind of an inconsistency where I'll upload a talking video and then maybe it's two weeks in a row where it's no talking for you guys my goal is to try to do more talking videos for you so that's 2023 hopefully we can get that done I do have a good amount of ideas and some videos lined up coming out in 2023 for you so I'm excited for you to check them out so do like and subscribe if you want to continue on this journey with me with that said let's get into the last game which really surprised me that this was the first time I played it no man's sky no man's sky was the f I think it feels like it's always been there for me I grew up loving Star Wars this game is like my 10 year old gaming dream you get a spaceship you can fly to different planets and explore them come on what, what more do you want and on top of that I think back in the day I would have wanted more combat related things but now that I'm a little older I love the chillness of it the you know there are certain situations you're fighting against things but for me I just like the peaceful exploration parts of it so I do have a playlist for No Man's Sky and that playlist will continue to grow let me know what were your favorite games that you played in 2022? I'd be really excited to know. Remember to be well to yourself and be kind to others.